Can we really trust Labour to stand up for women's rights? It's time now for the head to head. So J.K. Rowling has now slammed the culture secretary, Lisa Nandy, after the Labour MP suggested that there could be some circumstances in which trans athletes could compete in women's sport. Speaking to The House magazine, Nandy said that individual sports should decide whether or not biological males should compete against women. She added, we ought to respect the fact that they're far more expert in making those judgments and decisions than we are. I want to make sure that they feel supported to be able to make those decisions fairly. But I think most have come to the conclusion that... Although they want to be as inclusive as possible, biology does matter when it comes to sport. Well, get this. It comes after three trans athletes dominated the podium at a cycling event in America last week, relegating female competitors to the sidelines. And as the nation gears up for the opening ceremony of Paris 2024 tomorrow... At the last Olympics in Tokyo, the weightlifter from New Zealand, Laurel Hubbard, became the first trans woman to compete alongside biological women at the Games. Um, I must say, it didn't go that well for her, but it did look as though it's because you're not bothered. But anyway, after Lisa Nandy opened the door to trans athletes competing alongside biological women, can we really trust Labour to protect women? I want to know your thoughts. Go to gbnews.com forward slash your say. Tweet me at GB News. Make sure you vote in our poll. But first, going head to head on this. Former Olympic athlete Mara Yamauchi and the discrimination lawyer Robin Moira White. Thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Uh, Mara, is this a concerning statement, do you think, from Labour's culture secretary? Well, I think it's important to look at the detail of what she said. She said, biology does matter. She's correct. That's the truth. I, I welcome that. Mm. But the logical next step of biology does matter is that males should not be competing in the female category under any circumstances because it, it needs to, sport needs to be fair and safe for women and girls. But what she said instead was, let's leave this to our national governing bodies to decide. And in theory... That would be OK. However, in practice, it's proved to be not OK. Here we are now nearly three years after the UK Sports Council's issued their report, which was very clear. It said fair and safe sport for women and girls cannot coexist with males in the female category. Mm -hmm. And despite nearly three years passing, most sports in the UK still allow males in the female category. There are only a tiny number which uh, has who have protected the female category. So yeah. what I would like to see from Nandi is leadership and encouragement and pressure on the governing bodies to restore fair and safe sport for females. OK, yeah, a, a definite sense. I, I think, Robin, that she's passing the buck there, really. And Robin, we, we did show a picture earlier on of some of those uh, cyclists, OK, that came, I believe, first, second and third in that particular uh, race. Uh, and you, know, you only have to look at the size difference there to know that that is unfair. I mean, do you think biology does matter when it comes to sport? Well, well I think we'd, we'd have to start with asking what's happening in British cycling. Uh, British cycling have made the decision that Mara would like in that um, they followed the science and they followed the law, which is part of the Equality Act that Labour passed when it was last in power, which permits exclusion for fair competition or for safety. So you've chosen to show what's happening in America. If we actually looked at British cycling, they are one of those codes that Ara would support. Mm. Now, there are other sporting codes where the sport is not gender affected. I used to compete in competitive shooting. Mm. Now, one couldn't argue that you know, there is a, a, a gender effect in that sport. On the other hand, we've just watched Wimbledon, and you plainly wouldn't, um, you know, where, where, where the strength of serve is important, then that's a sport at, right at one end of the, the spectrum. And it would be very obvious that the strength of serve would make a difference in terms of fair competition. Well, that, that, that's an interesting, that's an interesting be, point. Yeah. But there will be sports in between. Um, and I, I thought GB News viewers didn't believe in big government. I thought... GB News viewers. Yeah, I do think, though, to be fair, Robin, I also think GB News viewers don't like the idea of men in women's changing rooms and men taking a gold medal off a woman um, and, and the suspension of biological facts. Uh, I think that is something that does ring true whenever I uh, certainly see any uh, GB News viewers out and about or, or, or read the emails. But, but Mara, on that, has Robin got a point that there are some sports actually where it doesn't really matter, like shooting? If a sport is sex affected, i.e. there is a difference between males and females, 
then there must be a separate male category. A sport like equestrian, as I understand it, can be mixed sex because there's no clear advantage held by males. But if a sport is sex affected, even to the tiniest degree, there must be single sex categories. There can also be mixed sex categories, and that's fine for those who want to play mixed sex competitions. But there must be a female category if a sport is even in the slightest bit sex affected. Just coming back to what Robin said about British cycling, it's important to note that their breeze programme, which is for recreational level, this is uh, breeze rides, which are supposed to be women only. And as I understand it, trans identifying males are allowed in, into those uh, rides. They're allowed to lead those rides. So women and girls turning up there expecting a women only cycle ride. Mm could be led out into the countryside by a male. This is not safe and yeah. not fair for females. The, the, implication, the implication, Robin, of what Lisa and Andy have said there would be that if, if women's football associations or women's rugby associations or, or, or whatever it may be do make the decision that trans men can compete against women or alongside women in those, uh, uh, in those situations, uh, then the Labour government wouldn't stand in the way of that. So the Labour government would, would, would pass that onto that. And, and, and I, I do think that that is Patrick, a dereliction of... You mean, of Egypt, you mean isn't trans it? women, I think, not probably. trans men. Probably. You probably meant trans women. Mm. Well, but that's been the law since 2010, that the, it's been lawful for the sporting body to make that decision. Mm. And, and Labour have said very clearly that they're not... They regard the Equality Act as one of the jewels in Labour's crown, quite rightly, I think, and have said that they're not intending to alter those provisions of the Equality Act. OK, so Mara, look, you know, m maybe, maybe this is a, a question of just, you know, are we being a bit sensitive about this? I mean, is it really going to happen at the elite Olympic level? Although, to be fair, I did look at it before and I, I saw Laurel Hubbard competing in the weightlifting for uh, New Zealand at the last Olympics, I believe. Th this matters at all levels. You know, it's not just at elite level. Women at grassroots level, beginner level, recreational level, master's level, women and girls deserve fair and safe sport. And it's interesting in your introduction, you said Hubbard hadn't, did look like he'd yeah. not bothered. You know, we've seen males deliberately underperforming in the female category. This makes a total mockery of sport. Sport is about doing your absolute best mm. and male sandbagging to try and hide their male advantage just totally corrupts what uh, sport is. I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, I covered that at the time, right, a good few years ago now. And, and I think it's really interesting that you would say that. Like, you would know a lot more than that, about that than I would as, as someone who is a, an Olympian yourself. But that's what it looked like to me. It looked like there'd been a big hoo-ha about Laurel Hubbard turning up and, and oh, is she going to, or he going to win the gold. Uh, it looked to me like someone who just came in, you know, having completely not bothered to train, really. I it just found that, I found that a bit weird. We saw this with Leah Thomas. We've heard of coaches shouting at male athletes from the sidelines, you know, don't try too hard, don't make it look too obvious. This is a complete corruption of what sport right. is. And coming back to the Equality Act, Section 195 explicitly permits single-sex sport, so it is lawful to exclude all males, including GRC holders, from yeah. the female category. Robin, look, final word to you uh, on this. W what is it, do you think, about women in the Labour Party that they find so difficult to stand up for other women? Well, they stand up for everyone. That's the point of the Equality Act. It, 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 it balances the needs of all people mm. and where it's fair to exclude, it allows exclusion, and where it's not fair to exclude, it doesn't permit exclusion. Okay. All right, look, both of you, thank you very, very much. That was uh, Olympic athlete Mara Yamauchi there, discrimination lawyer Robin Moira White. Look, who do you agree with? Do you trust Labour to protect women? Uh, Phyllis on X says, absolutely not. Labour are responsible for the state of emergency women and girls find themselves in. They are an abomination. Daniel on your say says, why don't they just have their own category? That would make more sense. Joe on X says, Labour don't care about women, and the sad thing is so many of the UK were foolish enough to vote for them. So uh, not, a, not a huge amount of, for want of a better phrase, diversity in that inbox there. But your verdict is now in. 4% of you trust Labour to protect women, 96% of you do not.